Okay, so let's go on and talk about part two of module three. And we are in the grand subject of data cleaning, which is a core topic in this course. And the learning objectives for this video two are objective 3.3, three, which is to identify outliers and other sources of inaccurate and invalid data um, and apply techniques to handle them. And objective 3.4, which is to identify and remove duplicate records from the data set. So outliers are kind of a big deal. Um, everybody basically knows what an outlier is. It's a value that's outside of the sort of range of the other values. Um, and so this is the pillar of accuracy and valid validity, which go together. Accuracy reflects um, that the values are, are free from errors and mistakes. So if someone is 12 years old, um, their age should be represented as 12 and not 120, because that would be incorrect. Validity refers to how the data adheres to expected rules and constraints. So data taken over a certain time frame should all be date stamped within that time frame and not outside it. So accuracy and validity are very closely related. They're not exactly the same thing, but they're not. Um, they're usually kind of treated together. Um, another validity issue is in a numeric data set, the data should be numeric, um, and that's a consistency issue as well. So what are the problems with accuracy and validity? Um, problems with accuracy and validity can include issues with the range of the data, which is the outlier issue, issues with set membership, and issues with cross-validation. The data range issues, the range of data should be sensible in what would be expected. You should not have extremely small or large values, which are your outliers. Um, this is not a statistics course, so we're not really going to talk about like the methodology for identifying outliers in terms of like the 1.5 IQR method you learn in Stats 1. Um, but if you look at the data and clearly um, the value of negative 20 for a score doesn't make any sense, so that would be considered both a validity issue and an outlier issue. So when we talk about issues of accuracy and validity, this is what we're looking at. Um, how to identify issues with the range of the data. Frequency tables are great for that. Um, the plots, as much as I said I don't generally favor plots that much for um, data profiling and stuff, a box plot is a great way to show extreme values because you can see like a dot that's way outside the range in a box plot. Um, your basic statistics, just learning at the min looking at min and max values. Um, Outlier metrics, if you know the z-score method from basic stats, when you have a z-score greater than 2 in either direction, plus minus, um, particularly if it's like even bigger than that, like plus and minus 3, it's, it's considered an outlier. In order to look at z-scores, of course, you have to standardize your data with z equals x minus mu over sigma. Um, another quick way to identify data range issues is with conditional formatting. For example, if you have a column with age, um, do a conditional format to highlight anything below zero or above 100 because you wouldn't expect for age values to be in there. So, and here's some examples of, this is a box plot identifier and whatever this is, it's clearly an outlier. Um, this is the z-score approach where um, you would get a z-score of negative 2.42. Knowing your standard normal, it's an extremely low probability to have a z-score that far away. So that would be an outlier. This is the conditional formatting method, which is kind of fun. It's, it's sort of fun to do conditional formatting. Um, and to look at values that are, um, in this case, the values like between 1 and 100 are highlighted, and the others seem a little funny if they're representing like 0 to 100 scores, but they're probably not. So, okay. um, What causes data range issues? In some cases, you have to do some investigating here. Is it a true outlier? Like, is it really just somebody did really, really well or really, really poorly or some, you know, I mean, people have extremes. We have people of extreme weight and extreme height. Um, is it an inconsistent unit issue? Um, this can be a little hard to detect, but this is the issue of, you know, maybe some of the data is entered in meters and some of it in centimeters, right? So centimeters are 100 times meters, I think. I don't know. I forgot. Um, but, you you know, if your units are inconsistent, you're going to have sort of funny looking data in that sense. That can be somewhat hard to detect. 
Um, decimal issues used to be a common one, particularly when people did stuff handwritten because they would put like 4.0 and maybe the decimal point was really, really small. And so it ended up getting in the database as 40 instead of four. Um, other issues could cause data range issues as well. How do you fix data um, range issues? And the answer is it depends. Um, you can omit things, but you don't really want to start just like, you know, deleting your data here and there because that's not really data analysis. That's um, troublesome. And if you do, of course, don't forget to journal things. You may need to investigate things further. If you have a way to go back to the source, um, go back and figure out from the source or maybe there's somebody you can ask if this is really correct or something like that. Um, ideally, there were min and max restrictions when the data was entered for data validation, but as discussed many times, um, it's not ideal in the land of data. Okay, now set membership is kind of like data range, except set membership is with categorical data and data range is with numeric data. So set membership basically means that the value should make group sense. So if you have a field that contains values of colors, then the data in the field should be colors and not other weird things. Um, I made this example up, aren't I creative? So here we have a frequency table of animals and somebody entered toilet paper. So that would be a set membership violation. Okay. Um, how to fix these, investigate them and clean them if you can. Um, some cases you can sort of like use maybe an other category for things that don't really make a lot of sense and make a note of that. But um, you can't just delete all your data and get rid of it. You have to work with it the best that you can. So, okay. The other issue um, is cross field validations. Now this is, um, I say data cleaning involves the cleanliness of data within a single field, but cross validation refers to two fields. And this is typically something with the, with two related fields, birth date and death date, date start, date end, um, where the consistency would be like, you can't have a death date before a birth date. So cross field refers to generally two fields, possibly more. Um, this is an example of start date and end date, and you can see the inconsistencies here because you can't start on March 10th and end on January 5th of the same year. It doesn't make any sense. Um, so the cross field validation, and you can do pretty easy calculations to like um, subtract end date minus start date and look at those and then do your conditional formatting and look at them, do validation. Um, this is probably the only thing that frequency tables won't really do because you can't do a frequency table like start date and end date by, the, by themselves and see this. In some cases, you might be able to do a cross tab, but um, it depends on the data. Like if you did a cross tab on dates, you could technically have like infinite number of rows and columns. So that would be kind of a mess. But if you did a cross tab on like something categorical then or simple categorical, then it might make sense. Um, Another thing that you can do is you can add a field and recalculate things to see if um, it checks out. Um, for dates, you can you can do you can do date math. Um, Excel very easily will subtract any date values, um, and you can calculate things and look at them and see if it makes any sense. Um, here's another issue of cross validation with dates, and we have people who died before they were born, which obviously doesn't make any sense. Now these here, the ones that they died and were born on the same day, that might actually be like a stillborn baby or something. So that is actually possible. Another place where you would see possibly a cross validation issue is if you had a calculated column, like total salary per week, and that should technically be hourly wage times hours worked and they should equal each other, um, but they don't. So then you have like a validity issue there. Um, so that's another example of cross-validation and a validity issue with data. Okay. What to do with those? Um, you can, if you have um, these values and trust them, then you can just recompute the, the total salary. Um, there's just something wrong with how this was calculated for some reason. Okay. Yes. Um, you could discard it as invalid, but if you trust the hourly wage and hours work per week, then there really be no reason to throw that part of it away and recompute it. Okay. So the next objective is objective three, four, and that's the issue of duplicate records. And this relates to the issue of uniqueness of the data. So 
every record in a clean data set should be unique and there shouldn't be duplicate entries. Um, duplication can ch cause analytical problems, which double counting or triple counting is the obvious one. Okay. Now duplicates though, they can be true duplicates, which would be like a double entry if, um, if somebody accidentally like hit enter and enter a record twice. Another place that duplicates occur a lot is in sloppy joins. So if you join one data set to another and one data set only has one record and the other data set has two, you may end up accidentally duplicating records that way, which is very common, which is one of the reasons why I say that joins are like one of the most difficult things because if you don't know what you're doing, you can really cause serious problems there. Um, the other potential though is that some duplicate records are actually intentional. Like I know that I go to the store and buy dog treats twice a day occasionally. Yeah, I do. Um, so I would be like the same person with the same ID purchasing the same thing twice in one day. Um, there should be a timestamp on that, but still. So there are cases where it's possible a duplicate record is not really a duplicate record, but there should be some accounting for that in, in the database. But um, it's not like every single thing that there's two of in the same day are necessarily um, inaccurate duplicates. So you need to consider the context of the data. So here's an example of what's very likely to be a real duplicate. This person, Grace Liu, um, same date joined, same salary, same age. When you delete duplicates, you wanna make sure that um, they're identical across the record. There are actually two separate IDs in here. So this is like a double entry, but it's pretty clear that same age, same salary, same name, and same date joined is unlikely to be um, an intention, like a real duplicate. This one is a little um, more murky because buying 22 of something for $1.80, um, you can do what I do sometimes, which is you go to the same store and you buy the same thing twice in one day. I've done that several times, so it's not like super unusual. That would be tougher, I think, to determine. Could be a second record. Okay. Um, you can find duplicates with frequency tables. This is the one where this woman who's duplicated, um, that would be assuming that no not no two people have the same name I would still investigate that a little more because sometimes with common last names um, and just common names in general you wouldn't believe how many people have the same name like I've actually looked my name up in the internet and surprisingly I think there's like 11 people with exactly the same name and three or four of us are actually the same exact age so um, it's not like uniqueness is kind of like um, not that unique <laughs> I guess Okay, um, you can fix duplicates with, um, SQL has something called the no dupe, dupe key. There's an easy way to do it in Excel as well, but be careful. Proceed with, with caution. Make sure that you're not just randomly deleting things. Make sure that you've investigated um, your duplicates. And so here's two sets of duplicates in the data. And then in Excel, um, I cut off the top part, but there's a button here on the data tab this little button here that has this little duplicate axis is remove duplicates. Notice that I selected every single column before I would do my duplicate deletion. Like you don't want to do this just on ID values or just on like name. You want to do it on everything. Um, so it's like a true duplicate. And then this is what Excel will do when it removes duplicates. It will tell you um, two duplicates were found and removed. Ideally, now this is more of a database thing. Ideally, when you have an ID key that that is unique, um, not always because I, it's possible to double enter things and enter the same person twice with two different identifiers. But ideally, an identifier key like a student ID is unique to that person. Um, but here's an example of like two student IDs having the same number and they're two different people. So depending on context, that can happen in some cases. So if there's, and these are um, in relational database, these are like your identifier keys for the relational system. Um, that's when you have like multiple tables that join to each other. That, um, for a long, long time, that was the best way to set up a database. It was the most efficient way. There's other stuff now, but that was how to do it. So, but these identifier keys should be unique, but it's possible they're not. Um, so you, you might have to go back to a database administrator and say, hey, look, there's duplicates of these. Um, it may present problems for merging data if you have a key that has more than one person associated with it or value. Um, 
Typically, though, a lot of this stuff is back-end database stuff. It's not your responsibility to set up ID keys in a database unless you're also the database administrator. So that is the end of our accuracy and validity. Um, there is no exercise actually on duplicate, so the exercise is on accuracy and validity. Again, um, it's explained in, in Canvas, and it's another Excel sheet with a number of issues with accuracy and validity. And your job is to essentially determine what to do with those issues. Okay, so this concludes part two of module three. Thanks.